Okay, uh, this is a tutorial about handwriting, uh, hand drawing, a watershed, and a floodplain. What I did was trace this out of the textbook. You have a copy of this, a blank copy in your notes um, that has the lines and the index contours already labeled. Hello, Silky. So what I've done, I've labeled my index contours in red, and I've put the labels not in the middle because I'm going to be drawing there. I have done that, that's step one. Step two is labeling the index contours, it's every fifth intermediate contour. I've also labeled the outlet. The textbook has you doing that much later. I, I don't really see a reason to do it later because this is the um, this is the the boundary pardon my cat. This is the boundary of our parcel. Uh, and so the outlet is going to be on the downstream side of our parcel. And we've got to determine exactly where this this channel goes through our property. Third, step three is really to visualize the flow direction. So it's going to go from high elevations to low elevations. Now, if this was actually in CAD and each of these lines was at the elevation that it is marked, you could then turn your view cube and see it on the side in 3D. You'd see a bunch of lines going sideways. This is the plan view, not the profile view. Uh, and so on this view, we're gonna look for the numbers that are higher since they're not physically higher on the page, like, like a profile would be, we just have to go by the numbers. So we know that it flows from west to east because it goes from high elevations to low elevations. So th the key is that you start everything from where you end. So you're gonna start drawing at the outlet. And you're gonna be drawing the channel center line from the outlet towards the source. Uh, wherever that may be, it's going to be off probably this west end of the paper. So what you want to remember is that starting at the outlet and going towards the source, you're actually following these sort of V's or U's. They're going to be pointing like an arrow. So this stream, I'm just not even going to draw. I'm just going to visualize it. I'm going to follow the V's. Now you may say, oh, well, it could go that way. That's actually probably a major tributary, but that's the ridge. And so I know that if I go here, it, it actually just stops at the ridge. It's, it's not going to keep going. So I'm going to follow the, these V's and it's going to go along like this and then make a sharp turn and end up somewhere in here. All right, so now I visualized, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it. This took me a long time to make, so here's hoping I don't mess this up because I'm using pen. I'm trying to approximate hitting the tip of that V at 90 degrees, so perpendicular. And that's actually what you're going to do in CAD. You're going to use your perpendicular snap tool and you're going to connect all of these endpoints of lines, which you made in your chapter 11 contour assignment. And you're going to try and just do it a little at a time. I really suggest that you do this by hand first for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't know, it just, it's, I think that you'll learn it better if you feel it in your hand. 
Also, this is a skill that you're going to be honing in your hydrology class, so you may as well get started now. So what I like about this book is it does introduce a lot of skills that we are going to expand on later. Okay, so there's our main channel center line. Now we're going to draw the basin ridges, again, starting at the outlet, but this time we're going to be following the V's that point towards us. So let's, let's see if we can find these. I'm not drawing them, I'm just seeing where they are. Remember what, uh, according to the notes, what a ridge is? It is the highest point in the basin. Oh, before I forget, let's let's do our flow direction arrows. Just put some every once in a while to remind us that it's actually flowing from west to east. Even though we drew it from east to west, it's flowing west to east. There's my north arrow. All right, so let's see. We're following the V's that point toward us. That one there. This is twisting and turning quite a bit. Of course, mine is hand-drawn and is not exactly like the book. So I just wanted an example. Again, I'm trying to approach those points, or sometimes they're rounded, as perpendicularly as possible because this is the dividing line it's the watershed. Essentially, a raindrop will either go to one side or the other. So it follows in between like that. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that purple. Okay, so now let's do the other side. We've done the north ridge, and now we're gonna do the south ridge. Remember, we're just following those U's. Hmm. This is sort of taking me off in another direction. So I'm thinking it really goes like that. This is as much an art as it is a science. When you get to hydrology, your instructor, Beth, will probably tell you uh, that we're not building bridges. So it really, <laughs> I mean, everybody's basins ended up looking different. It's just how it goes. You can see I made a couple of mistakes. I'm just gonna scratch that out. And that didn't exist either. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's the watershed delineation. Now in AutoCAD, you would go ahead and hatch all of that and there'd be layers involved and all of that. But by hand, that's the watershed. Um, don't forget that when you do it in AutoCAD. You want to make sure that you connect the north and south uh, basin ridges because that way you can isolate that layer that, and hatch in there and, and then unisolate and it's just way easier to, to do your job. Um, lay ISO is a great command. All right, so let's move on to floodplain delineation. 
So floodplain delineation, uh, essentially you start with this, only you turn off the watershed layers. You still have the same channel. And of course, for your project, you're gonna, you know, your homework, you're gonna be using the contour map that you created with your script. So same channel, same direction flow arrows, all that good stuff. However, now you're gonna be showing the width of the channel and something called bank full. So first, let's offset the channel center line to show the width of the channel. Now at this scale, it's probably really tiny. So now I'm doing it by hand, I'm just sketching. And that's actually a little more natural because streams are not exactly the same width their entire um, length. But in AutoCAD, you'll be using the offset command. Uh, don't forget that in, in AutoCAD, you can go ahead and turn this, this channel center line, it, make it a polyline, and then curve it. Do a, a curve fit in your P-Edit option list. Um, and remember, once you've made a polyline, you can actually just right click, like select your center line, or sorry, select your center, yeah, your center line or your channel boundary. And then right click and choose curve fit from that menu, from the polyline uh, menu option. All right, so that is main channel. And I'm going to go ahead and patch this a little bit so we can see it more clearly. So that's the main channel. That's like the actual width of our stream seen from an airplane. Now the bank full is as full as the stream channel can be without being flooded technically. So it's literally at the tops of the banks. The bank is full. So when we go to doing our flood stages, then you know that you will, you can't ever go less than bank full. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean when we, if we run into that. So I'm gonna say that the bank edge is here. Now, why isn't this, you know, why aren't I following contour lines for this? Well, the reason is that it's at such a, depending on how you look at it, large or small scale, that we can't pick up those contour changes. If our contour interval was less than one foot, we might be picking this up. Uh, I, I don't forget what length this is supposed to be in her book. She never included the file, so I don't know. Oh look, there's a little ridge, so I'm definitely gonna pick that up. And there's another one, so it flattens out like that. All right, and I'm not gonna hatch that part because I definitely want you to see that that is bankful. Okay, so that's step one and step two. Step three of delineating a floodplain is you've gotta know where your stream gauges are. Now, Dr. Yasmin has you numbering from west to east. And that makes sense, you know, you read from left to right. However, we've been drawing from the outlet. And so what I want you to do when you use the measure command is measure the center along the center line from outlet to there. And you may have to change the direction of the numbering and that's okay. So we're gonna add a stream every, I think it's 50 feet in the book.
print it off on your notes and play with it. Print out a couple copies. Practice. Ideally, you should be doing your drawing assignments more than once. Remember, this is a five contact hour course. So that's five hours you're supposed to be learning before you even start your homework. And I may have done too many or too few, but that's all right. So these are our, our stream gauges, probably the United States Geological, Sur Ge Geological Survey, or Geologic, sorry, survey. And they're numbered. One, two, three, and so on. I'm going to label the first four, first five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I think the book only gives us twenty stations. One, two, three, four. Five, so I think I did make an extra one or I started I'm all one off I think that's how it is so now I need to look at the station stage hydrograph fancy word basically it just means it's a table that so it, it's a it's a table that's the graph part uh, writing hydrograph meaning it's about water and station stage means it's showing the correlation that at this station the flood stage is x number of feet and at this station it's whatever number of feet now um, we need to look at that the the numbers that she had in her book were not, they sort of didn't go with what she um, drew because the numbers, I don't know, I don't know where they came from. The green numbers are the ones that I am going to be using. Uh, on the above the floodplain station stage hydrograph in the textbook, you do see some discharge hydrograph, it's just a table that shows the, the volume per second, it's a cubic feet per second, each every two hours. And you can see that right around